Now, Albert Fabrega has joined us to talk all things roll hoops, roll structures, halos. Hello, Will. How, how are you? I'm good. How are you? What have you got here? Well, I was trying to uh, reproduce what happened the other day when uh, you had that uh, the taxi and uh, what's going on when we start taking pieces of the car, what is affecting the driver and, and uh, what is not, to try to understand what happened there. And that it worked because uh, the driver was okay at the end of that amazing crash. Yeah. You see? A lot of pieces up and down. I know. Now you've got some things to show us back here, basically to explain. Yep. Well, first of all, the halo, the roll hoop. Yep the whole structure on the car and how it works in these kind of an accident? They are all in the technical regulations, so there is a lot of aspects technically uh, to take care about. They are called both roll structures, mm -hmm. the primary, that is the, the roll hoop, let's, let's call it like this, and what we know as uh, the halo, that is the secondary, secondary uh, roll structure. They both are, uh, during the test, they, the, the FIA and the sport carry over a lot of tests of with a lot of loads, about, uh, for example, on the roll hoop, 105 kilo newtons, that is about uh, 11,000 kilos, that's a lot. Wow. Vertically, then 60 laterally, 70 longitudinally, and also with the halo, a little bit more, they go up to 140 kilo newtons, so that's wow. a lot. And uh, it means that they need to hold all this pressure and all this energy when there is a crash. Okay. So, the characteristic, the halo, is uh, made from titanium. It's an alloy of titanium, grade five. Uh, it's from the same supplier. The teams are not building the uh, halo. So this is a standard titanium exactly. part. Exactly. Teams, and what we see is a carbon shroud around the outside of it. Exactly. They came at firings around to play with aerodynamics. Uh, it's a piece that it, it weights about seven kilos. This is iron. This is for Formula Three and all lower okay. categories. Uh, it weights seven kilos. It's a stiff. Has a lot of a strength, a slide, only seven kilos. And the whole chassis must be ready for this. You cannot put this a halo in a chassis without modifica do modifications to make it stronger everywhere, wherever it goes. In the two points at the back, next to the drivers, and the V connection that is going into the front of the chassis. Okay. So that creates a very, very safe let's environment. Survival cell for, yes. for the driver. Because this is what we've always Evolve. called the survival shell. Yep, the tub. That's it. Is what we call the survival shell. Everything of the car is designed to break off and just leave this yep. survival shell. Exactly. But uh, there is also another point to take, uh, to take in account because everything is safe. But if you uh, drive, stand up in the car, obviously you will not be safe. So there is other regulations that are uh, setting the driver position. It must be within a certain measure. You want to try? This is where I come in, right? Yeah? This is where I come, come in. On. Right, that's it. That's my driver. I've brought a very special carbon fiber rule. This is not within Formula One regulations. It's not. But that's, this is the helmet. That one is. That one is. This is the one they use for the extraction test, right? Exactly. I will not extract you. It's going to be the first target is to put you in. So, let's say, not easy things because of the halo is to get in and get out of the car. But I think this is not a problem for us and not a problem for you. Are you comfortable in? Oh. Are you more or less in? It's a dream. So, to see if Will is in the good position, what we have to do is to put that carbon fiber rule or ruler between these two points where the halo V point is fixed and the top of the primary roll a structure and in that position with we'll sit it properly and with everything attached and we thought what is my formula one special ruler here we are so the measure it must be at least 75 millimeters if i turn around you can see that is now is a little bit more is uh, 12 130 so uh, he could you could go up, up if you want, a little bit higher. You could, you could sit higher if you, if you want. So there is a lot of gap for the taller drivers to be in that tolerance. This is the minimum weight where the helmet and the driver must be seated to be in a safe position. Because if there is an accident and the car goes upside down, the helmet is not touching the tarmac. It's completely protected for the halo, for the secondary roller structure, and for the primary, that is the roll hoop. So you're safe. First test. 
It's past. You can hop off. Ah, fantastic. That's it. All right. Say yeah, that, my friend. Good job, mate. Thank you so much. Good job. All right. Oh. Yeah. We don't want another crash, you know? <laughs> but we also have... Yeah. Thank you, my That's friend. That, we also that, have that, that everything jacket. here which you have yeah. created for us to show us the many different types of roll hoop that yeah. exist within the sport. Because, of course, the teams, as we've seen, come up with various different ways around the regulations. The halo is the same for everyone, as you told. But the roll hoop, or the primary uh, roller stretcher, is different. This is a proper Formula One car titanium roll hoop, you can see, it's so light. Wow, it's light. Yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. light. There is a lot of engineering going in that because it needs to go through this uh, very, very strict test of F uh, FIA. So they need to be very careful to try to make it as always. Steve, going through the, the test, but lighter, as light as possible because the weight is so high. So they want to make it as light as possible. That's the reason they put these holes on it. But every single team is uh, understanding the rules in a different way. We have this one that is from an old Renault. Thanks Alpine for being helpful on these uh, things. But th here is uh, a formula, an old Formula 2 uh, roll hoop that is uh, the way, for example, Ferrari okay. is approaching it with this uh, triangle where they get the engine intake here. Other teams take the opportunity and make this around so they can have more air intake. Okay, now more some teams taking the cooling up to the car instead of the side ports to make a different aerodynamic approach. And the other ones, this is the camera. We can put it everywhere. Nice. Okay, this is the TV camera. And another ones like, for example, Alfa Romeo is just using a single blade okay. to hold all and pass all the tests and hold uh, the car in case that there is a, an accident. So we have three different philosophies in how to make the roll hoop. Yeah. How does the roll hoop have to be actually attached then to the monocoque? It's up to the teams. They can bond it. There's a very special glues that can bond these things. They can put balls on it. So depending on the team, the thing that need to be sure the team is that is passing the FIA test that they are doing every single chassis. Before they did it only in one chassis and all the others can be just with a sticker. Now they, they go through the test in every single chassis. In every single chassis. Yep. Incredible stuff. So, Amazing. So uh, all of those safety elements combined to allow Joe Guan Yu to walk yes. away from that huge impact at and, and I'm sure that the sport uh, will take note of every single thing that happened there because there was a lot of elements. There is no single accident that is the same. Exactly. There is a lot of different forces, momentums and conditions that happen when there is an accident. I'm pretty much sure that the sport will take note and we will improve any single thing that can be improved to uh, always have a priority, that is to save the life of the drivers. And this is the thing, this is what the sport has already said since that accident. Obviously, we haven't seen much of the car since the accident. It was brought back with yep. the sheet on top of it when it got back to the paddock. Yep. We haven't really seen it. Um, we saw the incident itself. We saw the car flip. But since it's got back to the paddock, that'll be taken away. The investigations as will be undergone and we will have learnings from that as a sport. I'm so, sure. I guess how maybe crash testing uh, in the pre-seasons can be improved, could be changed sure. potentially if it needs to be. If it needs to be. And uh, FIA and the whole sport has done a very good job on the safety matter, on the safety side, for example, with the halo, going against everyone that was saying that uh, the halo was not nice, that was not needed yeah. for Formula 1. I was one of them, you know? Right. It could was. I, it's it, not it, nice. It's it, not nice. Admit that there was, but, there was so many that did. Roman Grosjean, famous, yep, said he, he thought it was one of the worst things in the world. Saved his life. But so we need to life. trust them that they are Absolutely. the ones that are the most uh, knowledgeable, say, informed. Exactly. You, you you know the word on, on that. But they've done a fantastic job on it. Yeah, so yeah. we have to trust them, and I'm pretty much sure that they will uh, react if there is anything to change right. in the future. Well, thanks very much, mate. Thanks, uh, Will. Uh, as always. How are you going to get this in your suitcase? <laughs> Don't wait. That's going to be tricky, huh? That's Goodbye. a tricky one to put, to put back to Barcelona. Thanks, mate. Thank you. A good driver, by the way. Thanks, man. It's pretty fast, right? Yeah. Are you? <laughs>